Mark chapter 16, 15 to 18. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who b- believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These signs are with you and me. He says, go to all nations, he says, preach the gospel to the whole of creation. And you know, sisters and brothers, after Pentecost, the church, the Catholic church, which has lasted for 2,000 years, she was so missionary minded, she sent out missionaries, 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 to every nook and corner of this planet. The Catholic church spread and spread and spread. But some way down the line, I don't know, in the, in the last, I would say at least 100 or 120 years, Somehow this whole mission has been forgotten and because they have forgotten our mission, see, for this mission to be, to be fulfilled, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus. So when we don't evangelize, do we need the Holy Spirit? No. So without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing happening in my life. So the church... Has, has, is dying practically. Really, it's dying. If you look at the church spiritually, she's dying. South America, thousands and thousands, day after day, are leaving the Catholic Church and joining Protestant churches. The whole of Europe has given up on Christianity practically. France, Germany, all those countries, these bastions of, 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 of Christianity, They've, England, all that, whole of Europe has gone practically. You know. So... So that, this is the concern of the Holy Father. So St. Mark is saying, and these signs, if I don't feel shy, you don't heal, I don't heal. You go to your friend's house and she's sick, say, do you mind if I say a prayer for you? Lay hands and pray. I still remember, you know, the early days, I was terribly misunderstood. Nobody supported me, no one encouraged me, nothing. Even my own family laughed at me, put me down, ridiculed me. And I went to spend a holiday with my sister. And they all just said, you have gone crazy, you know, what is this, you are taking religion so seriously, your f- career is gone, your future is gone, and they, they, it was very painful for me. So I went to spend a holiday with this, with this particular sister, and that evening she was rushing to the hospital, I said, what happened to you? She said, I have got a severe toothache, the pain is excruciating, she says, and I have to rush to the dentist. I said, do you mind if I say a prayer for you? She said, pray. So I put my hands and I just said, Jesus, I ask you to take this pain and heal my sister. Instantly the pain left her. And that night, she and her husband are kneeling down and receiving Jesus in their hearts. That night. They were open to the gospel. When they saw Jesus demonstrating his love in a, in a tangible way, so, I'm not saying everyone I pray for is healed. I'm not saying that. God will, God, healing comes from Him, but I will humble myself and I'll pray for the sick. It comes from, if they heal, I say, praise God. If they're not healed, I say, praise God. I have no power. I can't heal anyone. And who's the healer? Jesus. Okay. So now, so, now, before Jesus went to the Father, now, if you read, you go, go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, even Luke will say, in Luke 24, 47, in Luke 24, 47, Jesus is giving the great mission to the church and he says, uh, and that repentance and remission of sins must be preached in my name beginning in Jerusalem and the other most parts of the earth. He says. Must be preached. Repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. And then of course he says, wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. He says, don't go out and evangelize until you are endured, until you are anointed, until you are empowered. Why, why is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, sisters and brothers? You know, this is a spiritual work. You know who your enemy is? Who's your real enemy? Come on, who's your real enemy? Satan, he's a spirit being. He's extremely powerful, intelligent. Lucifer was one of the, the most beautiful and, and brilliant of all the angels. Pride came to him and he collapsed. So now he is warring against God. He and one third of all the angels were cast on upon the earth. So my enemy is a spiritual enemy. 
So a spiritual enemy can only be overcome with spiritual power. See, we've got Pakistan, one of our enemies. Yes or no? So India and Pakistan, we are carefully watching each other's. We watch the strength of the army, we try to match it. We watch their planes, we try to match it. We watch their tanks, we try to match it. We watch their submarines, we try to match it. Because if I don't match my equipment along with that, they will defeat me, yes or no? So we are as a spiritual enemy. He's a thief. Jesus called him a thief in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to rob, kill and destroy. He's a murderer. John 8.44, Jesus calls him a murderer. Um, and in John 8.44 onwards, he says he's a murderer and he's the father of lies. Do you know who's blinding you? Listen to this carefully. I love this scripture. You know, I love scripture. Because when I take scripture seriously, I cannot go wrong. You know? Acts 26.18 Acts 26.18 when, when Jesus gave St. Paul the, the, the mission to go and preach, you know what he says to St. Paul in Acts 26.18? St. Paul is narrating the mission Jesus gave him a couple of years before, when Jesus encountered him. You know what he's saying? I'm sending you to the Gentiles. Who's a Gentile? A Gentile is anyone who's not a Jew. I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes. Now, it doesn't mean to say all our eyes are, are we all blind people? Physically, no. It's spiritual blindness. This is a problem in the, in, on, the, on this planet. Man is spiritually bl blind. So I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes. You see, when, when I'm blinded, I'm in darkness. So turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive the forgiveness of their sins and the inheritance among the saints by faith in me. So what is the spiritual state of the Gentile world? Anyone who doesn't know Jesus. I go strictly by the word of God and what the church teaches. Man is spiritually blind. He is, it's, it's as though he lives in darkness. Living in darkness, the prince of darkness is reigning in his life, deceiving him, lying to him, murdering him, playing havoc in his life. And the only way to come out of this darkness, out of this blindness, out of the frightening dominion of Satan, the only way is when I bring people to Jesus and they put their faith in Jesus, their sins are forgiven and they come out of darkness into light. And that's what's happening to us. First 28 years of my life, even though I was a, a good practicing Catholic in so many ways, I was living in darkness. My life was a contradiction to the gospel. I never knew Jesus. And when a blind man gropes, he, he knocks on this, he hits that, he falls down, hurts himself. That is why our lives are in such a mess. Who are the blindness in our, in our lives. They have not really turned to Jesus. They are not allowing Him to be the light in my life. I am not willing to obey Him. I am not willing to follow Him. Then I continue remaining in darkness. I am going to hurt myself. And when I hurt myself, I am living in darkness. What do you think I am going to do to my wife? I hurt her. And what do you think we parents are doing to our children? We hurt them. So the whole family life has... So before Jesus ascended to the Father, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, on, on the day of the ascension, Jesus is reminding his, his apostles, those 120, together with Mary, he says, he says, wait in Jerusalem, he says, you've been baptized by John unto repentance, not many days hence you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you will receive power to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. Without this anointing of the Holy Spirit, you cannot evangelize. You, you know, people will talk of the Lord. It's easy to say the Lord, okay? It's easy to say God, right? But you take the name of Jesus, you see difficult to take the name of Jesus. To take the name of Jesus, you need the power, the anointing of the Holy 
spirit without an and it's in the it's not in the name of god it's not in the name of the lord it's only in the name of jesus your sins are forgiven you receive the gift of eternal life and you are saved name of jesus that is why the devil will do everything possible you know now see so to evangelize sisters and brothers why You see, it's not telling you, forcing you to say evangelize, evangelize. I'll tell you something. I can stand here from morning till night and give you a beautiful talk, why to evangelize, how to evangelize, tell you everything about evangelization, and you won't be able to do it. Evangelization must come out of experience. If I don't experience the reality of Jesus, if I don't know the unique role of jesus as the savior of the world and if i and if i and his and if his command to to go and evangelize is not ignited in my heart by the holy spirit i cannot and i won't evangelize now why do why do i evangelize because for me in my in my own life my whole life depends on jesus everything depends on jesus I've seen Jesus meeting my financial needs. I've seen Jesus moving mountains in my life. I've seen Jesus working miracles in my life. I've seen Jesus working healing people in their life. Every, everything depends on Jesus for me. So when Jesus is a, such a reality for me, and I know he's the only answer to all of man's problems, how can I keep him to myself? I can't. I think I gave you an example yesterday. Suppose I'm a... I'm, I'm, I'm a brilliant cancer specialist. Okay. And somehow you've got cancer. And someone comes and tells you, go to this Dr. Fritz Mastrinus, he's brilliant. You thousand percent, you see all his, all his operations are a hundred percent successful. You come running to me. Yes or no? And I will take up your case and how I will operate you and I will free you from cancer. Tomorrow you get a neighbor who's got cancer. Are you going to keep quiet? What's the most normal thing you will tell that person? Go to Fritz. I went to him and he cured me. Go to him. He's successful. Yes or no? You don't have to be told and coerced and, 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 uh, and, and, and coaxed to, to tell, tell that person about Jesus. It comes from your heart. So you have to encounter Jesus. Now, that's why this baptism in the Spirit is extremely important. But what is the prime purpose of being baptized in the Spirit? The prime purpose, as Jesus himself said to us, says to us, in Acts 1.8, he says, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, after you, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you'll receive power to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, outermost parts of the earth. So that means from within, I am empowered, I am, I'm motivated, I'm energized, to go and proclaim the name of Jesus in word as well as in deed and this fire must be kept burning see any now you're going to be you're going to be filled with the fire of god's love but any fire if it is not fed what happens to it it dies now that is why in in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 paul's disciple close disciple his spiritual son was Timothy And you know, in the, in the early church, intense persecution, but they depended entirely on God, entirely on Jesus, entirely on the Holy Spirit, and nothing could stop them from evangelizing. Nothing could stop them. Feed us to the lions, crucify us, cut our heads off, cru- do anything. We can't help but speak what God has said and what has God, God done in our hearts. You know? So Paul writes to Timothy and he says, rekindle the flame of God that has been given to you through the laying on of hands. He says, Timothy, when hands were laid upon you, the fire of God's love was rested upon you. Timothy, rekindle it, he says. Get that fire burning. And then he says, for God has not given you the spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and self-control. See? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. He emboldens you. Gives you a holy boldness, a holy courage in the face of immense persecution. You, you still have the power, the courage to go out and speak about Jesus. He gives you the spirit of power. He gives you the spirit of love. So why do we evangelize? 
why do we evangelize god so loved the world that he gave his son see so when the son comes to me the love of the son will send me in love to suffering humanity our families are broken our, our, our you know our, our relatives are broken so much of suffering confusion and hurt and pain and who knows what the children are drifting away from god each generation is getting more and more indifferent from god and how can if god's love is in my heart how can i just keep quiet the love of god will send me out and send me to evangelist and self control and then he tells timothy how to rekindle this flame very practical in verse 8 he says be not ashamed of the testimony of our lord jesus christ for be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of god timothy keep that fire burning and how do you keep that fire burning keep evangelizing don't let persecution don't let opposition quench that fire but god will give you power god will enable you to be faithful and in that faithfulness of god the spirit of power of love and self control in that power keep evangelizing keep evangelizing keep evangelizing so what happens when you don't evangelize what happens to the fire it dies when it dies what happens when the fire goes off what happens to you cold you are gone your soul is cold your soul is indifferent there's no zeal in your heart your prayer life will suffer your sacramental life will suffer and all those past problems will start coming back inside and when you're cold you were nothing to give you can't talk to your child about jesus you can't talk to your grandson you cannot talk to your child about jesus you can't talk to your grandchild about jesus you can't talk to your neighbor of neighbor about jesus you know why because my heart is cold and that's the problem you know with the, with us coming here we come we are filled with the spirit so much we talk to you and then when you go back home you're only evangelize i'm working on a ship all ungodly men practice that they are no one cares about god no one goes to church no one prays nothing and i am baptized in the holy spirit now i realize this is my mission field i have to evang- i don't from within i want to evangelize i want to tell people about jesus and i had three indian officers one was quite a faithful devout hindu so he would listen i would talk to him he would listen 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 he would only listen but no response another young man he was a radio officer smart fellow he wouldn't enter into my cabin he said that man fellow fritz is either reading the bible or he's listening to some talk or he'll talk about jesus so he just bypass me and walk away yeah. another one was a parsi he was a joker <laughs> you know don't want to listen even but i am praying for these guys now this radio officer who was totally indifferent you know that's why we can learn from protestants protestants are so evangelistic you know so those of you from goa you know all those little churches that are happening what see they i don't know they convert one catholic and they set him on fire we catholics come here we are set on fire and then we those they catch them they touched by jesus and then they become so anti catholic and they are evangelizing and they try to convince you that you are wrong come and join my church yes or no how many of you have gone through that come on senior relatives friends and all in goa who gone there and they are trying to pull you into that church don't go anyway so my ship comes into port all missionaries gray head they are they have been in india in bengal for 40 years they have been missionaries one morning both this old couple come up and i say hello to them and when they know i'm a christian they're excited and then i told them i said no i've got three other indians they were more excited so i invited those three indians to meet them and uh, you know what they do they they are so happy to meet these indians they all hindus now eh? so they come home for a meal so these indian officers are very happy they go to this old missionary couple home for a meal and they cook an indian meal for them you see how they are evangelizing then the evening before bring them back to the ship they take them for a service 
for a gospel service to their church to sunday now generally if you go to a protestant church after every service they give an altar call they say is there anyone here who does not know jesus you haven't given your heart to jesus come forward and receive jesus you know and many people get touched during the service and they come forward they receive jesus in their heart and their lives begin to change so when this altar call was given this old missionary couple nudged them and said go 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 forward so these three guys just to make them happy came forward knelt down this pastor came led them into a prayer and this then they came and dropped them back on the ship and this old couple was so happy they said brother brother fritz what wonderful news they said what happened you know all three of them have given their hearts to jesus but these guys just went through it to make them happy nothing has happened to their lives but they gave them a bible they gave each one of them a bible so this radio officer comes to me one day and he says brother fritz brother fritz he says he called me fritz he says fritz he said i'm reading that bible and i find there's so much of sin in my life i said wow that's good news because unless you recognize sin in your life you don't see the need for a savior so jesus has come for sinners then 3 days later he said to me i'm fasting i said what you are fasting why why are you fasting he said you know i'm reading that bible and something is telling me jesus is the way jesus is the way and something else is telling me my hindu gods is the way i don't know which is the way he says so i've written a little on a piece of paper and i put it on my table god show me the way so i want to know who's right jesus or my gods then i told him about jesus my ship came into port and when i used to come into port i used to in vancouver it's a, it's a port in in in, in canada i used to go to a beautiful spiritual church every one baptized in the holy spirit the worship the praise the word of god i took him for that service now when before coming back to my ship i told all the young people i said come on over to my ship come on come and have lunch with me i said why why did i call them because i said i want each one of you to share your conversion story with him and tell him how jesus touched your life how jesus changed your life so they all about six of them came on board ship with me along with this hindu fellow and they tell me their story 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 now that evening there was a the evening service i couldn't go for it i'm on duty so i sent him along with them when he comes back from that from that service he comes and embraces me and he says brother he says fritz he says thank you thank you thank you i said what happened what is thanking me for he said you know during the service i just felt jesus is the way and i've opened my heart to him and my heart is flooded with peace i was so happy from that time every, then, then then i prepared him for the baptism in the spirit i gave him teaching as and now you have to be empowered by the spirit taught him for 3 4 days every evening he would come to my cabin we used to sit and pray read the bible prayed uh, prepared him for the baptism prayed for him for the holy spirit burst out in tongues and when he goes back on leave he is evangelizing out in bengal in, in in the farms you know there are different ways of evangelizing so you have to be led by the holy spirit recently i was in hong kong a week ago i was in hong kong i'm on the streets and then my the friend that I'm walking with they, we were looking for one for mcdonalds we wanted to have a cup of coffee so he happens to catch two muslims and asking them where this and one fellow i could make out he's got his cap and he's got his beard <laughs> and the other fellow looks you know sweet young fellow he was so as he was asking i'm telling him i said you know something jesus is the way jesus loves you jesus died for you that old muslim got very angry with me He says, "Why are you telling me about Jesus?" He says, "Don't you know I'm Muslim?" He says, "Yes, we honor Jesus. We accept him as a prophet, but you accept him as God, and you shouldn't be telling me this." He says, and he really got worked up. So I said, "Just calm down. Don't worry. I'm telling you about Jesus. Why are you getting excited?" And then that other young fellow, young Muslim, he also said, "Just be patient. Don't worry. I'll, I'll tell him also to calm down." And then he walked. Then they walked away. Then after five minutes, again we met them. This time I caught the young fellow. I said, "Come here." I said, "I said, see, I am telling you, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. He is the only way to go." And he and this young Muslim said, "But I believe in Allah." I said, "Okay, fine. Now tonight you say a prayer." I said, "Sincere prayer. Say, pray to Allah. Say, Allah, 
I met a young man this evening. He's saying, Jesus is the way to you. If he is right, show me. Because I told him, unless God gives you a revelation of Jesus, you cannot believe in him. Because Jesus himself said, unless my father draws you, you cannot come to me. So I said, you pray. When I evangelize Hindus, you know, when I say it in love. See, you must always, the language of God is love. Never condemn, never judge. So you pray and ask, God, show me the way. Is Jesus Christ the way to you? And if you sincerely pray and you want to know God, God will give you the revelation. Jesus will come to you and you will open your heart to him. I can give you so much. So I'm all the... You see, one more thing. Evangelization is not necessarily holding a mic and preaching. It's just, this is one way. But... The main way of evangelizing, which is equally important for me, for all of us preachers, is this one-to-one, one-to-one, one-to-one. I'm sitting in the train and I'm talking about Jesus. You know, I go in a bus, I'll show you. My cross is there. Okay. Just, my cross is inside. Because I know when to pull it out and when not to pull it out. So I'm sitting in the bus in Mumbai. And one poor woman comes. And you know, the bus conductor, because of her condition, is so indifferent to her. And she's got a little baby. And the Lord says to me, get up, friend. Give her the seat. So I jump up and I make her sit down. So all eyes are on me because I've given my seat to this poor woman. So now what I do is, you know, quietly I'll pretend to scratch leather and pull this thing and put it out. And then I'll, you know, pretend to turn around. Oh, like that, you know, I said this thing. Why? Because I want to know, I want to tell everyone it's because I'm a Christian, I have given that seat. Or sometimes, you know, when you go on the road, you see, especially in India, so many terrible cases, no? Most often we pass by and they go. But I also do that. The Lord says, stop. <laughs> so I go to hell. Again, and in India, the moment you stop, everyone wants to see you. <laughs> so before I start helping, I'll pull my cross out, dangling there. I say, ah, kya mangta, pani mangta, bread mangta, and I'll go buy something. But my cross is nicely hanging out. So they all know I'm a books books are a powerful means you've got for example for a Muslim you've got idea to call him father or the tone veil you've got the cross and the switch blade testimonies you know just buy books and put in the hands of your co-workers and just read this book because Jesus loves every man every woman he knows how troubled man's heart is and he wants to bring consolation salvation mercy everything to him and he has left it up to us to evangelize. Is that clear? So keep, and then lastly I say, pray a lot for your children, your grandchildren. They are growing up in a very evil world, which is indifferent to God, hostile to God. And they must remember you as a mother of prayer, as a father of prayer. My daddy loved Jesus, my mother loved Jesus. And that eventually will rub on to them and they will turn to Jesus.